political polarization in America feels close to a breaking point. This particular problem with U.S. democracy is rooted in two realities. First, the parties are in tight competition. It used to be that one party had a lock on Congress for years or even decades, and the party that got used to losing had a lot of reason to compromise. But now, with every single election razor thin, neither party has an incentive to give an inch, and so governance takes a backseat to, comp- uh, to politics. Second, the parties have polarized, and with them, so have the voters. That's actually new. It used to be there was a lot of ideological overlap between the parties and their members. But now each of these close elections feels existential because the parties are really different and will have different governing activities and philosophies. And so voters are desperate because their identity is on the line to make sure their party wins. That means that voters are willing to put their party ahead of democracy when the ships are down. These two problems together compound each other and mean that simply allowing uh, for one party to win or having a new person in power is not going to make enough difference. We need more fundamental structural change. Unfortunately, what to do is a little less clear. Very few democracies have polarized to this extent and not fallen apart. What we know from countries that have fallen apart is that it's not enough to just deal with the social differences to bring red and blue together for nice talks. You need to deal with the structural incentives for this sort of polarization and with the key leaders, the actual politicians who benefit from the polarization continuing. With that in mind, here are three ideas to take down the temperature. First, ranked choice voting. This is simply, instead of having a binary yes or no for each candidate, having a group of candidates and ranking who you like one to five. It's not that complicated, but what it allows for is greater political competition. You get flavors within the parties. You can have a social progressive versus a um, a working class liberal. You can have an electoral conservative who really is socially conservative versus an economic conservative. And that greater competition and those greater sense of identity allows for more deal-making. Second, we could take down the temperature on the judiciary where the tail is starting to wag the dog. People are voting for politicians based on who they'll vote for, for judge, because those lifetime appointments matter so much. The quickest way is to end the lifetime appointment, cap seniority at 65, and ban any future employment that would help influence judicial decision-making. You can still give them their salaries for life. They get that right now. You could also depoliticize the appointment process for judges. And finally, we need a new national story. In Canada in the 1960s, when Quebec secessionism and the fights between the French and the English and political assassination was tearing that nation apart, the country promulgated a new idea of a multi-ethnic Canada. And ironically, this story of difference helped unite the country. Americans need to stop seeing each other as part of a binary, two tribes fighting one another for all the spoils, and start seeing one another as locked in the same family forever in a world in which we can only progress together. Thank you.